Okay, wonderful. Well, I think, Kate, if you're okay with it, I'll kick it off. That'd be great. Wonderful. Welcome everyone to our open enrollment press conference. I'm Erin Gurak, the district director for Congressman Lloyd Doggett in Austin. Today, we will hear an update on open enrollment efforts and how to access health coverage during the COVID-19 pandemic. So for speakers and members of the press, please ensure that you mute yourselves and then unmute when indicated to speak. Thank you so much. And now I'd like to introduce Congressman Lloyd Doggett. Thank you so much, Erin. And uh, thanks to everyone who's participating and all those who are joining us this afternoon. Uh, during this uh, worst pandemic in uh, the last century is hardly a time to be without uh, health access and a family physician. Uh, but sadly, this is the plight of millions of our fellow Texans, uh, with uh, ours being the state with the most uninsured of any state in America. Each year since approval of the Affordable Care Act, I've joined with groups, uh, particularly foundation communities, uh, to encourage Texans to make uh, better use and, and take full advantage of the health insurance coverage that is available through the Affordable Care Act. Uh, we did this with uh, considerable success uh, last fall uh, at, with Mayor Adler at City Hall uh, with a disease that is as contagious as COVID-19. Uh, every one of us have a stake in seeing as many of our neighbors insured as possible. We all lose out when they lose health coverage. Uh, in March, I led a number of our House colleagues in calling on the Trump administration and Governor Abbott uh, to take uh, the same action on health care enrollment under the Affordable Care Act uh, that the Trump administration took after Hurricane Harvey. And that was to have simply a, a short 60-day uh, special enrollment opportunity because of the natural disaster that we're going through. That would be a time that the many Texans with no insurance or those who got stuck with junk insurance could seek comprehensive coverage. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this request reju was rejected on ideological grounds uh, at the same time that the president and the governor were working through our court system to destroy the Affordable Care Act and its pre-existing condition guarantee. Uh, while I have been involved in the successful effort to assure that everyone who needs testing for COVID-19 will not be billed for that test, the House has not yet been able to overcome Trump administration opposition to covering the treatment of those who struggle to survive the virus. Uh, through our, though our efforts continue with uh, a further congressional legislation, perhaps as early as next week, nothing we are considering is a real substitute for the benefits of comprehensive health coverage. Patients should be seeking preventative care, treatment for underlying conditions, and have the peace of mind that they have coverage in the event of a medical emergency, whether it's related to COVID-19 or anything else. There's not much good, of course, that comes with losing a job, uh, something that is troubling uh, millions of Texas families. Uh, we know that they're struggling to get by without a job, trying to seek uh, unemployment compensation or keep a small business afloat. But there is one opportunity that losing a job creates, and that's part of our focus this afternoon, because at this time particularly, it is a very important opportunity for the many who lost their health coverage when they lost their job. They don't need a new special enrollment period. They already have one guaranteed under the Affordable Care Act for a 60-day period after they lose their job and in health insurance. Today's event is focusing on pairing Texans with the resources that they need in order to get covered today. You're about to hear about this option and available coverage from uh, Corey Hadamer with Foundation Communities and Rachel Blair with Ham Health Alliance for Austin Musicians. We were so pleased to hear Ray Benson uh, as, while well, the uh, administration has been asleep at the wheel, uh, Ray Benson is up and going again, having recovered from COVID-19, but Ham does great work with so many musicians that are not nearly as well known as Ray. Uh, because unlike some states, uh, and many states really, uh, Governor Abbott continues to refuse federal dollars that would expand Medicaid, many of our neighbors are too poor to qualify for uh, the Affordable Care Act marketplaces, 
uh, and they do not qualify as well for the very narrow Texas Medicaid program. And I'm pleased that Ann Dunkelberg, certainly uh, one of our state's most leading experts on healthcare, is with us from the Center for Public Policy Priorities to give us an update on Medicaid and Medicaid coverage in the midst of this pandemic, something we continue to work on uh, in new legislation in Washington. Some governors have been pushing to repeal a law that prohibits uh, them, restricts them from kicking people off Medicaid. Because Medicaid is a major state expenditure, it's one of the places that governors now face with declining revenues and tight budgets look to, uh, but it just couldn't be a worse time to restrict eligibility or reduce Medicaid coverage. So I've led over 150 of our House colleagues from across the country uh, to uh, seek to assure that Texas and other rejection states do not take federal pandemic monies, billions of federal dollars, and then turn around and reduce the amount of Medicaid coverage. Uh, I'm the first uh, to recognize, because I was on the health subcommittee when it was first adopted, that there are many imperfections in the Affordable Care Act, that it is still uh, a part of a very deficient health care system. But it is a, it's much better than where we were, and it is a great opportunity for so many people this afternoon. Uh, some people I know will take a look at this and they'll determine that they are ineligible uh, for the Affordable Care Act tax credits or that it's too expensive to maintain their existing employer coverage under COBRA uh, and that they face a difficulty in enrolling in the marketplace. To those, I would say that we are hard at work in trying to overcome uh, Senate opposition to strengthening and improving the Affordable Care Act so that more people can qualify for this less expensive coverage. There's still some hope for that, but there's great hope for the many people who do qualify, and we're encouraging them to contact uh, foundation communities today about that. All of us are yearning for an opportunity to put this shelter in place behind us, but there's just not a quick fix to this crisis. Uh, we must continue to listen to the doctors, to the medical science, and not to the politicians who take advantage by doctoring the truth. Uh, together, I believe we can weather this storm. The only question is how many people will be deliberately left to drown before we reach smoother waters. Uh, so Corey, if you could just take it from here, uh, Foundation Communities, it does tremendous work. I appreciate your efforts. And if you can describe a little of the opportunities that are available today for consumers uh, through the marketplace coverage. Sure. Thank you, Congressman Doggett, and thank you for um, establishing this platform so we can help get the word out about the support we can provide. Um, so for those of you who don't know us, Foundation Communities is a local nonprofit organization here in Austin. Um, in addition to operating more than 20 affordable housing properties throughout the city, we also offer a range of free programs that includes our health insurance enrollments, also tax preparation, college sports services, and financial wellness programming. Uh, we're the largest health insurance enrollment program in Central Texas. Um, we help more than 5,000 people enroll in health insurance each year, and we're available year round to help um, people understand their health insurance options, enroll in health insurance on the healthcare.gov marketplace, and then most importantly, use that health insurance to access care uh, when they need it. We know that health insurance is important for physical and financial well-being, but it's also complicated and that enrollment can be stressful. And so we're here to help navigate that process and make it easier. So normally we serve people out of our two Prosper Centers in Austin, um, but due to COVID-19, we're doing everything virtually. So our incredible team of health insurance experts is available by phone. Um, they've still been helping people enroll in health insurance by phone, helping them understand their healthcare options if they've lost their jobs, um, and then helping them use that um, insurance to access care when they need it. So a couple things to know, um, if you or someone you know needs health insurance, um, the open enrollment period is November 1st to December 15th, but if you have a certain qualifying event, you can enroll outside of that period. And so those events include an involuntary loss of coverage. So that includes people who lost their jobs and had health insurance through their jobs. Um, a couple of others just to be aware of, if you move, if you have a baby, get married, if you're released from incarceration, or if you gain an eligible immigration status, that also qualifies you. Um, if you have one of these events, you only have 60 days to enroll. So we encourage people to act quickly. 
um, to go on healthcare.gov and enroll in a, a health insurance plan. Um, if you lost your job and had health insurance, you should qualify. And based on your income, you should qualify for a lot of financial assistance as well, depending on where that income falls. Um, and that reduces the cost of your plan. And so part of our role is helping people understand the full cost of their plan and help them find a plan on the marketplace that's going to meet their health care needs, but also their budget needs. Um, one piece of really good news for Central Texans is that all four of the companies who offer health insurance plans on the local marketplace are actually committed to waiving costs for COVID-19 testing and treatment um, for those services that are in network. And so part of what we're doing is helping people find service providers that are in network and use their health insurance to access care and make sure that care gets covered. Um, if you recently lost your job, you might also be eligible for COBRA um, or you might be eligible to get added to your spouse's coverage or your parents' coverage. Um, and so we really encourage you, if you have an offer of coverage, an offer of COBRA, to call us. We can help you understand that offer versus your marketplace options and really pick the best one. In some circumstances, the marketplace is going to be a much better option, and we can help you understand um, which one's going to be best for your unique health considerations and financial situation. Um, if you recently lost your job and didn't have health insurance, you still might qualify for a special enrollment period if you had a change in income. And so we can help you project out your income and complete that application. Um, and finally, I just wanna say that if you don't qualify to enroll in the marketplace right now, um, one of the things we do is help people find local healthcare providers and clinics that can offer care to people who are uninsured. And so we can help you navigate that depending on what your healthcare needs are. Um, health insurance is complicated, that's why we're here. So please call us if you don't have health insurance or you need help understanding your health insurance. Um, you can schedule a phone appointment with one of our health insurance experts by going to insurecentraltexas.org. Uh, you can email us at enroll at boundcom.org or you can call us at 512-381-4520. Uh, and with that, I'll turn it back over. Well, Corey, thank you very much. And I know uh, there probably are some people out there saying, uh, well, I've lost my job. I can barely keep food on the table and a roof over my head. How can I buy insurance? But I believe from the discussion we had about the Affordable Care Act last fall, uh, in the general enrollment period, that most of the people who contact you find out that they, because of the tax credits that are available under the law, they were able to get health insurance for, in many cases, no premium, and in others for a very low, modest premium. Is that right? Yeah, so usually more than 90% of the people we work with qualify for financial assistance, and it's usually pretty generous financial assistance. We've had clients have like you said, $0 a month premiums or premiums that are $20 a month. And so um, that's a big part of what we do is make sure people maximize the financial assistance that's available uh, through the marketplace. Great. And Rachel, I know you work closely with Foundation uh, and that uh, our musicians and not just the people that, uh, that maybe pick the guitar and, and uh, sing, but the sound technicians, the recording facilities and the like, they have been hit first by the uh, shutdown of South by, and that when we've talked previously, there are still uh, hundreds of people within the music industry right here in the live music capital of the world that are really small business people, sometimes solo practitioners, and they don't have insurance to protect themselves in a pandemic. Can you tell us more about the role of HAM? Absolutely. Thank you so much for the opportunity to um, talk about this and I wanna give a special shout out to Foundation Communities who is one of our um, cornerstone partners. The Health Alliance for Austin Musicians um, provides affordable access to healthcare for Austin's and Central Texas's low income working musicians. And Congressman Doggett, you're exactly right in that musicians by and large are self-employed and there aren't um, typical employment-based insurance options, but that's where the ACA comes in and Foundation Communities comes in and our navigators who really try to match our members and musicians and other gig economy workers with affordable health insurance. One of the things that um, is maybe a little known fact is that the average HAM member receives $500 a month in premium tax credits. 
So that reduces their monthly insurance bills by $500 a month. And that is a lot of money. That's a lot of money during normal times. And it's a lot of money, especially now when uh, folks in the arts and the uh, music industry have lost a sizable majority of their work and don't see a realistic path to um, consistent earning potential in the future. And so uh, HAM members are very grateful for that assistance and help. Um, recently, I've been reflecting a lot on the importance of health insurance as we've been in this pandemic and thinking about how do we help people get insured? And how do we help motivate them to do something that, you know, sometimes people would rather do something else than sign up for insurance on a, 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 any old Tuesday, right? Um, but when we think about the value of it, um, it really comes home in when we look at examples like a global pandemic. If you wait until there's an emergency to sign up for insurance, you likely will not be in the open enrollment window. And so we were trying to start spreading the uh, message now that it's very important to sign up for insurance come this fall or if you have a special enrollment period because maybe hopefully you won't get sick from COVID, but it would be an incredible comfort to know that if you do get sick, you won't also be met with a catastrophic uh, financial obstacles and barriers. That would be an, a, a very stressful thing for you and your family. So we really want to encourage folks to look at whether or not they qualify for a special enrollment period if they've lost their job. And then outside of um, pandemic type situations too, there are things that can unfortunately happen like accidents or diagnoses. And we want to make sure that you're covered before that happens. And for people in the Central Texas area, if they are interested in becoming a HAM member or looking into the special enrollment periods, they can go to myham.org, M-Y-H-A-A-M.org. And we have expert navigators uh, who also partner with foundation communities. And together we can make sure that you get access to the care that you need and all of the resources that are available to you. Well, thank you very much, Rachel. Uh, and I know the Center for Public Policy Priorities uh, prides itself in providing uh, objective research in working in a bipartisan way. I remember attending your uh, luncheon last fall honoring former Speaker Joe Strauss, a really great gathering. Uh, and throughout uh, your tenure there, you have been the expert on health care. So I particularly want to hear from you about Medicaid opportunities, but any comments you may have about other aspects of the Affordable Care Act will be welcome also. Uh, I'm not getting any audio at my end. Thank we, you. Okay, there you are, good. For letting me back clean up. It takes yeah. me a minute to remember to turn that microphone back on. And I'm gonna repeat a little bit, but I think sometimes a little repetition is good. I think one thing I would wanna remind folks is that, um, you know, for families that have lost employment or dramatically lost hours, uh, they may previously have made too much money or have not needed for their children to get coverage. And it's just a reminder that Medicaid and the Children's Health Insurance Program are open 365 days a year. And so for families that had a dramatic loss in income and need to be looking at coverage of their kids, that's definitely something to look at. And these folks, uh, you know, HAM and uh, foundation communities, they can, you know, they are more focused on the marketplace perhaps, but they can totally help you get access to Medicaid and CHIP as well. And for that matter, we're hearing from a lot of the sisters around the state that the first thing people are concerned about is food and, and they can also help you with applications for uh, what used to be called food stamps, what's called SNAP now. So important to understand that. Um, you can apply online too uh, and God help you, you know, go ahead and give it a try. It's not a bad online application, but these, these people who can give you can make it a whole lot easier and they can figure out what's the quickest way for you to get to the right kind of insurance uh, for different members of your family. The other thing is just to underscore what Corey said, uh, if you lose a job and as a result of losing that job, you lose your job-based insurance, then you've got that golden ticket to sign up for care in the ACA marketplace, which is a, an amazing deal. Uh, and definitely worth looking into if you've lost coverage, but really important to remember that there is that 60-day window for that. So don't 
let that pass you by. Uh, and I think we can't stress enough that not just here uh, in Central Texas, but everywhere in Texas, nine out of 10 people who use the marketplace get a subsidy to help them reduce their premiums and for many of them, also their co-payments and deductibles. Um, I can't also say enough, stress enough, how valuable application systems is. Insure Central Texas is one of, is like gold standard level uh, help. We are so blessed in Austin and Central Texas to have them, uh, but there are good people in the rest of the state too. For example, most of our community health centers have dedicated trained staff to help people sign up. So wherever you are in Texas, there are resources to help you. And we strongly encourage that because you know, guess what? Some of these applications are based on tax households and we all know how confusing taxes can be. So please uh, reach out and get them help if you need. Um, one of the other things that we wanted to emphasize is that my brilliant coworkers, uh, Stacy and Melissa, uh, put together a wonderful fact sheet that kind of walks through all of the options that you have for getting coverage. It also highlights some of the holes, you know, like who's left out, but it walks through that. It's on our website in English and in Spanish. So uh, giving websites over, you know, verbally is never very good, but C, P, 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 one C like that, and three P's like pandemic, dot O-R-G. Um, and finally, one of the things that I've been working on for, uh, is my concern about the uninsured. So as most of you, or many of you know, we have five mil an estimated five million uninsured in Texas in the most recent census data, and the experts are telling us that half of the people who are applying for unemployment, which in Texas is nearing 2 million, are likely to end up uninsured. So we are likely to be looking at an even larger number of uninsured. So one of the pieces that's gonna be super important, both to deal with the public health, uh, the immediate public health needs of this pandemic and with the efforts to reopen and relax any restrictions is we have to have access for everybody to have testing access and it needs to be free. And, uh, and so we are in a little bit of a challenge of getting the word out about that. Are the, the good news is our state has a bunch of money that Congress approved for Medicaid to pay for free testing for the uninsured. The downside to that is about one in five of our uninsured in Texas today are either relatively new legal permanent residents of the United States or undocumented folks who are excluded, unfortunately, from that Medicaid fund. And so it's gonna be super important for our Texas officials to get the word out that there is free testing available to the uninsured regardless of, of your immigration uh, status or citizenship. Um, the other thing that we wanna emphasize, and you can see it on, online in, in detail, I won't drag you into those weeds now, is that pr almost everybody who has private insurance, not 100%, uh, the congressman referred to some of the junkier plans, but most of us who have uh, health insurance, depending on whether the feds uh, are, are in charge of it or whether state government's in charge of it, are in a situation where they're supposed to be doing your testing free and no surprise bills. And that includes not just the test itself, but also the office visit to get it. So if you're insured and you're getting some kind of crazy bill for your test, you know, please check out our website you should be able to reach out to your insurer or even the Department of Insurance because there may be a problem and, and you may not be, you know, be supposed to be getting that bill. Um, you know, obviously behind, as, as the Congressman mentioned, you know, we are going into this crisis with an estimated 1.5 million of our uninsured potentially eligible for Medicaid expansion. That number is only going to get better. So, you know, obviously our uh, our interest in, in promoting with our governor and legislature that we need to go ahead and move into Medicaid expansion is a huge issue, but we also need um, a couple of things. The Congressman mentioned so important that we keep that maintenance of effort requirement. I'm sorry I threw that jargon at you, but basically we have rules right now that say your state, you're getting a bunch of financial help with Medicaid. And in return for that, you can't cut anybody off of Medicaid until this whole disaster is over. Everybody is going to stay put. And, and as he said, there are conservatives in Congress who want to get rid of that. Uh, and that would be a, a terrible thing for Texans. Uh, we certainly don't need our Medicaid program cut any further. And then I think as um, has been noted by our other speakers, if you didn't have insurance before, if you went, came into this crisis uninsured, 
you don't necessarily get a special enrollment period. And, and as the Congressman noted, that would be a huge benefit to people who are suffering if we could open that marketplace back up, just like we did during Hurricane Harvey. Why on earth would we not do it now? Uh, so thanks for letting me rattle all of that off and, and happy to answer any questions. Thanks. Well, that was that was great. And thanks for the clarity that you offered and, and so many of the details that you filled in that are vital details for those who are listening. And I guess at this point, uh, Kate, if you'd like to call on any questions that we have out there uh, and we get them directed to particular people, we're ready to go. Wonderful. Um, thank you to all of our panelists for the wonderful information about the challenges and resources here. And for our journalists who are attending, you should see a banner at the bottom of your screen that includes a button to say, raise hand. If you could click that button, if you would like to um, be put on the screen to ask any of our panelists um, a question, please do so now. And I'll grant you permission to become a speaker um, and we'll put you up on video. So we'll just wait for a moment while people figure out where that button is. I know it took me a moment um, to do the same. Oh, I see one question. One moment, please. And this is from Margaret Nicholas at the Austin Chronicle. Um, can you hear us, Margaret? And is your video on? Okay, I think, Margaret, I see that you're a panelist, but your uh, microphone is still muted. So let me see if I can unmute you or if you can unmute yourself. Okay. That, that Great. Hi, Margaret. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you for having this uh, press conference. Um, I had two questions. One is if, if any of the panelists can talk about uh, numbers of people who may be, um, you know, potentially uh, be able to benefit from this, uh, this uh, enrollment. So um, I'm mostly focusing on Central Texas or Austin, but um, if you have numbers you know, how many, is there any estimates of how many people we think are, have lost their jobs and would be um, possibly eligible for this? The second question is, um, if you, if you think that you might be going back to work, like, you know, you lost your job, but maybe you're going to be able to go back in a, in a month or two, or maybe you're, you know, in the process of looking for something else, does that affect do you, uh, people's decision on, uh, in how to think about this? And do you want to take those? Are you unmuted? Oh, here, let me unmute you. Once again, I'm, I'm muted. So Margaret, I got so interested in your first question that you may have to repeat the second one, but I don't, I think the answer is at this point, I don't think I have a number. I can help you with a number, certainly not for Central Texas, but even for Texas. So we have some estimates of, of you know, where people will move around. So if a million people lose their employer sponsored coverage, how they will move around, but they are more general than that. The estimates are like, who will gain private insurance, which includes both the ACA marketplace and potentially people who go and just buy it at full cost. So I don't have a great number like that for you. I think the most alarming estimate that we've seen just in the last couple of days is, uh, you know, estimates that anywhere from 800,000 to a million and a half additional uninsured may end up in Texas. And that Texans who, uh, Texans, who are affected by this crisis are going to be more than twice as likely to be uninsured at the end of it as people in New Mexico or Louisiana where they have done Medicaid expansion. Because obviously, you know, if somebody goes from a moderate income to suddenly no income or very little income, that means suddenly you've got a whole lot of people who are potentially right below the poverty line or just above the poverty line, uh, particularly if you have kids in your household. So you potentially have a whole bunch of folks who if you were working in the ACA structure, you know, they're supposed to go to Medicaid as very low income adults and Texas just doesn't have that piece available for them. What was your second question again? Uh, the second question was, so if a person has lost their job, but they contemplate being rehired, you know, some of the businesses that, you know, had to let people go, but may have said in a couple of months, we'll be able to hire you back or, um, you know, or they're look, they're actively looking and there might be something that they'll be able to do. 
does that, should that affect their calculation? Is that gonna, like, are they gonna enroll in something and then have to drop it, you know, that kind of thing? I'm gonna just say a tiny bit about it and then put it back to Corey, because I know she's probably given this a lot of thought. But, but one thing is there is zero harm in signing your kids up for Medicaid. If you're a parent with dependent kids and you have zero income, you might even get Medicaid right now because, you know, if you have no income at all, uh, and the marketplace is available and you can get off of those anytime you want. You know, there's no downside to go ahead and getting that coverage. So I'm gonna let Corey give you an even more educated answer there. <laughs> that was great, thanks Ann. So I would just say that one of the things that we can actually do if you call and have that one-on-one -on -one conversation is project out what you're planning to earn the rest of the year and then um, help you make a decision. We would encourage people to get on, you need health insurance. If you're able to get health insurance through the marketplace, we encourage you to do that because you can cancel it. If then you get job offer coverage back, you can you know, cancel your marketplace plan. Um, but we would encourage you to encourage those folks to actually call us and we can walk through it. And then we're always available to update the application. If you get um, a new job, if you get insurance through that job, um, we can help you update your application. Um, we can help you with the cancellation, we can help you understand your new offer of coverage and um, we can navigate all that. So I would encourage people to call us because it is a very, it's a difficult decision. It's hard to plan right now for the next few months, but I think we would encourage people to make, if you have the chance to enroll in marketplace coverage right now, do it so that you have that coverage. And then if something changes, we can walk you through how to update your enrollment then. Uh, Margaret, thank you for your question. Uh, Sorry. Uh, go ahead. Just really quickly, um, is it 60 days from the day they lost their job? Is that the enrollment period? Yeah, so it's within 60 days, or it's the end of the month. It's, so it's 60 days out. I mean, so if I lost my job today, I'd have 60 days. So it'd be the end of July, I believe. Okay, from the month where they lost their job. From the month where they lost, yeah. But I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't wait till the end of July. Like. Right, right. I don't want to hog any more time. Thank you. Yeah, and, <laughs> and Margaret, I would just add on the numbers that you're looking for. You know, the potential audience. When you look at these troubling unemployment numbers in our area and across the state, you've got the potential audience of people. We know a number of those people will not qualify <laughs> under the terms of the law, but that's the potential group. All those who've lost their job. 60 days from that time are potential people and and all of them if they don't if they haven't figured out how to handle health coverage they need to call foundation and uh and check in or check in a community health center and get the facts thank you very much thank okay, you so much. yes um so we don't have anyone who's raised their hand yet so if you would just click that button to virtually raise your hand um, then I'll add you in as a panelist. So we can just take a moment. I know like everything these days, this is all unorthodox, um, but any of our reporters who are there, um, feel free to ask a question. Got okay, it. Now. I have one. Oh, sorry, sir. Go, go ahead. Okay. We've got a question from Judy Maggio um, at KLRU, host of Decibel, and let me make sure that she is unmuted <laughs> um, to participate. Hi, Judy. Hi, Congressman. Can you see me okay, Kate? Yes, thank you. Yes. Okay, great. Well, I, I wanted to piggyback on something that Ann said right at the end, and she said that during um, Hurricane Harvey and other big events that Congress had opened up the marketplace. Um, I'm just wondering, Congressman, what, what is the status of that possibility? Um, and, and have you been pushing forward on Capitol Hill? Well, uh, it's actually the Trump administration that opened it up after Hurricane Harvey, and they did the same thing with some other natural disasters. We were hoping that uh, just as a result of our appeal, and we also asked Governor Abbott unsuccessfully, unfortunately, to join in that appeal, to the Trump administration to just do the same thing they done with other natural disasters, then no act of Congress would be necessary. We have been trying to get it included in legislation, it was blocked by Senate Republicans in the last uh, uh, bill that uh, we approved, and we will try again in the bill that we expect will be coming up later in the month. Got it, thank you. Thank you. Any others, Kate? Thank you so much, Judy. Uh, we don't have anyone with their hand raised right now, so we can just give it a second and see if someone would like to. 
I was just going to suggest as you do that you explain, because I know we have a few people that are uh, watching on Facebook. Uh, if they have questions, we were really limiting our questions today to our reporters, but if they have questions, how they can forward those to us. Can you Absolutely. comment on that? For all of our folks watching on Facebook, and I know I've already seen a comment that said, click what hand. Um, if you're watching on Facebook, the way that you can submit a comment, um, if you're a viewer, if you've experienced healthcare challenges yourself, you can just write it in the comment section and um, we'll be filtering through those right now so that if we have a little bit of time at the end, then we can address those. And if you have a comment that you think of after this program ends, you can submit that to lloyd.doggett at mail.house.gov and we'll be sure to connect you with our team um, and answer it in full. Let's see for one more moment if any of our other journalists that are on the line um, would like to raise their hand. And if not, I just want to um, bring up kind of a, a common theme that I've seen on a lot of um, people's comments uh, who have written in in anticipation of this town hall, who are just asking, what's the first step I should take if I've lost my healthcare coverage when I lost my job? I know our panelists have sort of already addressed that, but any further comments or guidance you'd like to give would be appreciated, I think. Corey, do you want to respond? Sure. Um, you can go on healthcare.gov and start exploring your options, but really just call us. We'll walk through all of it. We'll walk through healthcare.gov. We'll talk through, you have to project your income for the rest of the year, which can be kind of tricky, so we can talk through that. Um, there are dozens of plans available locally, so we can help you pick the best one. And so if you want to, you can just log into healthcare.gov and start researching, but really just go online and schedule an appointment with us or give us a call um, and we can help you get started. Great, thank you. And I have a comment, I have a question um, from Abby Livingston at the Texas Tribune, who's having a little bit of issues with Zoom. Um, Congressman, she asked, um, if this isn't too, uh, too out there, how does this economic crisis uh, compare to your experiences during the oil bust in the 1980s? Um, and what kind of lessons uh, from that can you take into uh, the economic hardship Texans are seeing today? I think maybe the closer crisis is the uh, financial crisis around 2008, 2009. I think we, uh, we had a lot more cooperation. Uh, we had an administration, a Republican administration, uh, involved during part of that and a lot more bipartisan participation. It's unfortunate we don't have that now. Uh, I think also uh, the crisis that Abby refers to, which I do rem remember as a lifelong Texan and the financial crisis were times that affected particular sectors of our economy, but they didn't necessarily affect everyone everywhere. Yep. And so this is one where we really do all have a stake in what and how this turns out. And I'm just convinced that we will never get a sustained economic recovery unless we come to grips with this healthcare crisis. And one way of doing that is to be sure everyone can access healthcare. And that's why we, we focus today. And the other way, as I mentioned in my opening remarks, is to rely on the doctors, on the medical science, and not just whatever is the politically most advantageous uh, effort of the day. Thank you, Abby. <laughs> Wonderful. I know she, she can't respond <laughs> right now, but she can probably hear your response. Um, so I just want to give another minute or so. I know we've still got um, journalists from Fox 7 KTVC. It looks like CBS Austin um, and KVU who are listening in. If you would like to raise your hand um, and ask a question, or if we've just covered everything, then <laughs> we'll wait. And if they don't have additional uh, issues right now, I'm sure that all of our participants are available to answer them uh, separately thereafter. Uh, and Kate, if you don't have anybody else pending, I just wanna say uh, thanks to you and Aaron for helping from our office and to everyone who participated. Uh, and, and thanks uh, Rachel and Corey and Anne for all that you're doing to try to help our neighbors in this tough time somehow we're gonna get through it. All the best. Thank you. Great, thank you all. Um, and for any additional questions, uh, please submit them. Thank you.